Hello everyone, Kurt Olfer here and welcome back to another episode from Hopeful Labs. Today we're continuing on with Fifth Master Dagger and today we're going to be moving into yet another one of the Guardia positions that we see within Dagger, with Fury's Dagger, which is that two to Port de Ferro doubled. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, crossed, not doubled. Um, interestingly enough here, this, this, this play is a continuation, I believe, of what we've already been doing. So again, um, and actually this one here specifically is one that I don't know if you start off with the strike or if I've chosen to do this here starting off with. I'm going to run some theories on this throughout the whole point of it all, and we'll talk about that in the very back here. But regardless of this right here, we're looking at this as an offensive position. That's how I kind of interpret this right here. It's not a, it is after someone's grabbed you and they start doing this, rather than trying to play off of the one arm, it is moving in rather than staying back and trying to cover behind the person's arm. And that's kind of what I see this as. But we're going to explore that here and see how that works. So with that being the case here, let's take a look. Okay. So this week we are going to be looking at yet another way of utilizing uh, one of the different ready guardia that we that Fiore tells us about against dagger. And this one we're going to be talking about the tutta portis fair doubled. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, crossed, which does not have it doubled up where we're grabbing onto it. We're right over left here with our uh, with our with our right hand over our left. The image that we see here is this. Now this is very similar to what we kind of we've, we we saw in an earlier week where we utilize that double bracing and we create space here. The difference off this right here is that he says I'm going to stand ready to receive. This might be a few, one of the few examples where I don't think that he strikes to get in. He is instead choosing to step into this. Now interestingly enough, you'll notice that his leg so he's got his left foot forward in this. So unlike before, where if he grabs in, where typically the right foot's forward. What we're seeing here instead is the person's coming forward with this, with where he's going into this position. And what I think that this is signifies here is that he's not waiting anymore. He's going to take the action necessary to get in on this guy. So a couple of things. The dagger guy, so this, is, this becomes complicated. And I'm going to tell people right off the bat here, there's a point right here where he says, uh, utilizing the, 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 first, the first king of the remedy, I will take the dagger away from you. I'm going to tell you what I think that means here. But please, there's other people that have been doing this a lot longer, educate me, all right? I'm not necessarily sure which portion of he's talking about when it comes down to that. Uh, it feels very vague of which king and which remedy he's talking about. So off of this, what we're doing here is a couple of things. I go right into this position here where I'm standing with my, in that tutu porti ferro uh, cross, and I switch my feet and my left foot, my left foot is going forward. In this case right here, if he does nothing, if Connor does nothing but his dagger's in front, like we see kind of like it's like drifting off in this way, then I have the axis right here to go in low with this, which therefore gives me that lower, that turn right here, which allows me to take the dagger away from you and cause kind of that third master, uh, that third master of disarm that we see there, okay? But that's just one variant of it all. Again, I'm not sure if that's what he means as far as taking the dagger away. That is one variant in which I see how we take the dagger away here. Other variants in right here, so he grabs into me and right here, is I make the shape and I step in. If he decides to go high, I'm right here and I have this spot. So if he is really grabbing hard on me right here and I step into this way right here, as soon as he comes in with this, one, my arm is bringing up his arm here. It's not arm barring it. It's just, it's just, it's just uncomfortable. It's not stopping anything. It's not stopping his dagger from coming in. But maybe coming up, up and under into this way, it gives me access. So in this case, because the left foot is forward, and again, remember, this is not that we're sitting there saying, what's the play right now? Ideally, these are things to work towards. As I come up here into that second master, and I use this space, I'm going to utilize the lessons of post longa in order to create the, mis the, the middle bind. Remember, if I go like this right here, only thing that's supporting me is this one portion of my muscle on my, on my shoulder. Excuse me. But if I turn my body in, I gain access. So that looks off of this covering mechanism. I'm here. So from this position right here, I have a couple of options. First thing right here is post along the middle key. And if he's still holding on to me, I'm going to do everything I can groin shots, if anything else here, what I think also this allows us to do is, it gives me access to this spot right here to repeatedly just 
soften them up even more to take that dagger away. Okay, that's the first thing. Comes in again here. I switch my feet. I'm across into this. I can also, from this position, if he decides to push into me very strongly on this, I can also take it across and then find myself here once again into that third master disarm where I go into the lower lock. So again, he drops the dagger. Here, get up, get up. And now we're back into this, okay? So the so point being with that is, in either case of these, that crossing, my hands are open and I'm catching it on the forearms. So he grabs, I step immediately. I wonder, that's why I think right here, if I stand here like this, he might be like, I got you. The moment I step in, that might make him enough to be like, oh, I got to take this guy. He, he thinks he's tough. He's going to come up with a shot. And now I'm here. Okay. So other things that can be happening from here. Another disarm that might be found from this. If I let go, I'm in a great spot where I can grab his wrist, turn the dagger, strip it down, strike the bicep, come in here, and start causing everything off of this. Off of this right here, coming across, turning this into his face, causing all, all sorts of horrible things here. Similar concept that you see within that Force Master structure, right? Where I backhand it, we've talked about that before, and I come down with this right here into the bicep area, whatever the case may be. But because I've made this covering mechanism, I grab, turn into him. I can strip, stab, or, and off of this right here, as he presses into me, up, over, down, back into the third laster, take the dagger away, stab, 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 hit him in the head with the rondel portion, whatever the case, right there. All sorts of mean, nasty things about that. So the big thing about this right here, some key elements that make this work, I, I, I think make this thing work here. And mind you, this is not, so when we talk about trying to do this competitively, one, I don't think, first and foremost, there's something that's happening here in this representation. This might be someone coming up to me and like, so he starts shoving me some, right? And all of a sudden, now we're in a spot where it's like, hey, whoa, 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 whoa. And I, and I have to put myself in a position. Okay? We're not sitting there trying to score points here. There is something that this person is doing here. He's grabbing onto me, not to sit there and win a medal. It's not just I sit there and take this away. Ultimately, he's coming in, he, maybe he shoves me once here. And then off of this, I step into this, he grabs me again, and I'm in here. As he, this allows the spot to go into a spot right here where I have to use that's that covering mechanism, that Tutu Portifera doubled, I'm sorry, crossed, which will give me access into this. So please understand, when I say this right here, we're not gonna sit, we're not sitting here as like, it's not a wrestling meet, where someone's like, okay, ready, here we go. Your purse, okay, no. here we go, no. here we go. No. We're not doing that. This is, a, this is a day in the life. Right? So we're not sitting there saying, okay, go ahead, grab on, I'm ready, all right, here, set in position, and go. That's not what we're talking about here. So if we're trying to understand how this goes here, so there's a lot more going on in this person's psychology and in my psychology that is going to cause me to cause different types of things in here. So grabbing into this right here, he can grab onto this and shake me around. He's got all sorts of all sorts of nasty things right here. Maybe my hands are up. And he, maybe he's just posturing. Maybe he hasn't even drawn the dagger yet. So I can either sit back here. Maybe he's expecting me not to fight. I'm just sitting up here like this. Hey, man. Hey, hey. I don't want it. I don't want it. But instead, as he grabs onto me, he starts shoving me around. I step into it this way, which tells him, oh, shit, this guy knows what he's doing. Right? So maybe he starts turning into me to take the action, but he doesn't raise up the dagger. This allows me that action right here. So, man, this right here is where the guy's like, Oh, God, I'm going to raise to bring up myself here, right here. So I step into it. He comes in and boom. Because his idea is to come up as fast as possible right here. This can also be where he's coming, he's pulling from the dagger, it's the, the scabbard itself. I come around here. He draws up with that. He can't just lift forward with this. No, I don't have a dash right now. He's got to pull up with this, right? So that gives me that opportunity to use this. So he can pay us to pull up with it. I'm here. Shove this down, and now I'm into that third, into that place where I can work into that lower lock consideration on him. Okay. All of these have disarms that go to them. Other consideration, maybe he gets all the way up after he grabs into this right here. 
He shows me he doesn't think I'm going to do anything. I come right here. He pulls all the way up. And now I'm up into this position. Again, from here, this motion here is not comfortable for him. If my clothes are tight and they're not, basically, I give him a little bit of a snapshot against his arm because he's got, this arm doesn't get it. Right now, he can lift this up all over the place. You got this puffy ass hoodie here. But if this is tight to my body and something that may be more indicative of the time, my clothing may not make him allow him to move his arm as much. He rests, he lifts, I cover it here off of this. I can swim into that first master, that, into that, that, into that ligadura. I can use it right here as he pushes towards my face to go across once again into the lower lock we talked about before. Or off of this right here, I've got the ability to, in this cover right here, grab his wrist, take the dagger, start working in here. Or that fourth master dagger, which turns the dagger right into his eye, shot to the groin, everything I can here to take this away from him. So very fast. Again, fifth master, to me, is a culmination of everything that could be possibly happening that we've learned in Opera Zari, all the way up until this point here within the first to fourth master dagger plays. All these together here allow us to have situations. We don't have that. We don't have what that is right here, which is why it's so important to take a look here and see, okay, what is this person doing? What are they not doing? And how does that cause different factors for us to make these things happen? Remember, knowing effective strikes, the areas to strike right here, the lessons of the line and how we can kind of move that right there to go against somebody, how turns affect us, how making the person's body go, go in different areas right here is what shapes this to be a really, really, really nasty situation here. And with that being the case here, everybody, uh, that's going to that's gonna conclude this portion of the video. So you can see with this, you might understand why I'm saying, I don't know if this is where you start off with that fifth master positioning on the arm, or if you just step into that Tutti Portifero uh, crossed. To me, because the person has shifted the foot forward, it makes me think that this is a person here is allowing this rotation to kind of turn off. So I am allowing that pushing mechanism that they grab to round me out so that I have my hands ready there to take either action. Now, a big thing about this right here is, he states in this right here that I'm waiting for you in this position. And attack, attack me from above or below as you please. Now, this position we know works from above or below here from covering high or low strikes. And if you use either one of these right here, you can go to the upper or lower lock. This is once again, that continuation of are we coming across or are we coming this way? By here or here, whether it's above or below, we have access to a high or low lock that may be in the case. And ultimately right here, you can use this to once again, take away somebody's dagger. So I wondered in this case right here, like I said in there, and I'm, I'm please keep me honest out there. I don't necessarily know when he says they're the fourth remedy of the king of the, of the king and king of the dagger together with his plays. To me, I'm not necessarily certain. Is he talking about something here from the very get-go of this, from the very beginning of the King of the Dagger? Or are we talking about the, the Remedy concept? I don't know where he's referencing to. Please keep me honest on that. I'd be very interested to hear what people have to say. All I think he's trying to say is, off of this, when I is he talking about the four pictures in the very beginning where we're talking about uh, taking away the dagger and then getting the person onto the ground? Um, how the guy's got the dagger right here and it kind of goes across. The fourth image there is the old man holding the, you know, holding the, um, the uh, not ferns, I can't think of the word of it right now, but it'll come to me. But standing over a person that he has thrown to the ground. I wonder in this case right here, is he talking about that? Which I don't know the connection on. So please, keep me honest with that. Again, all I think that's happening right here is saying is that all the ways I've taught you to strip the dagger away from somebody, use that. And whether that be high or low, Lower lock, like you've seen in third master, upper here, where we go back here. Same concept. Use that type of situation here to pull the dagger out of the person's hand and to be able to use it against them, disarm them, or ransom, kill, whatever you need to do with them. Regardless, this is how I see it. So, uh, again, very, very interesting because we're looking at somebody who, in this case right here, is not taking... I think this is a spot where instead of utilizing strikes against, which kind of puts you behind the person's arm and maybe change their body to a direction that makes it so that you're pliable to work on them. Instead, what we're doing is we're stepping into it, we're allowing that to push and rotate. So by the image, you see that they, they shift their feet. Personally, I think that's just him utilizing this right here, where as the person pushes, I'm gonna get closer to you, which allows that. And whether the person's pulled the dagger or not yet, 
is gonna be kind of it's it's kind of inconsequential. We don't necessarily know how that goes. Above or below allows us the access that goes into there. So anyway, that concludes what we have here. Please uh, leave a comment below if you have any answer, information on that. I'd be very curious to hear what people have to say about that. Uh, you know, the grapple of the fourth remedy and the king of the dagger, um, which we which we talk about here as far as being able to take the knife away. Um, very curious to where, where, what are your thoughts on that? And maybe I'm missing something here. Maybe I skipped over something. I don't think I did, but it, it's, when I look at this right here, personally, I just see that as like, he's he's already taught you how to take the dagger away, which is basically the stripping of the way of whether it's high or low. It doesn't matter. You're using, you're attacking the person's pinky by rotating it out. That's why I think he's talking about using that mechanism within other plays to do so. That's all I think. Leave a comment about there. Let me know what your thoughts are. And let me know how, how you're performing this out there. Is this similar to what you do in other martial arts out there? Love to hear what your thoughts are. If you're new to the channel, please consider liking, and subscribing, sharing with a friend. Wanting to grow this channel here as much as possible. And that's not possible without viewers like you. Um, we're, close, we're, we're, we're close to four, uh, to 500. We're getting there. And love to be able to get that and continue growing up afterwards. So with that being the case here, everybody, uh, that's going to do it for this. Until next time, as always, please stay safe out there. Train well and fight on. I'll see you all soon.